Welcome back. My name is Dr. Elvis Asson. I am a senior climatologist at Climalogic Inc. and adjunct professor in the Global Institute for Water Security, University of Saskatchewan, and an associate of the Climate Risk Institute. Today, we will learn about observational data and considerations for use. This session is divided into three interconnected parts. In part one, we will focus on what is historical climate data. In part two, we will discuss how to use climate data to support adaptation. And in part three, guidelines for the usage of historical climate data and limitations will be presented. What is historical climate data? An initial scoping of a climate risk assessment project will identify the climatic and hydrological variables of interest to a project. These are typically variables that guide engineering design and variables associated with hazards to a project such as peak flood discharge. An important aspect of a climate risk assessment will then be the interpretation of these changes in primary meteorological and hydrological variables with respect to more complex phenomena such as floods, droughts, and changes in watershed conditions and hydrology. In the context of a climate risk assessment, historical climate data comprise of observations and climate model simulations. For example, in this figure, the black bow line represents climate observations up to the period 2020, while the gray small lines represent historical simulations from climate model outputs. So it is important to distinguish this. When we talk about historical climate data, we are actually talking about observations as well as climate model output during the historical period. It is important to, to understand that a climate system, when using on observations for climate risk assessments, that the climate is not constant. While the, the weather varies daily, climate captures variations on all time scales from one decade or century to the next and even on a seasonal and yearly basis. For example, some seasons are warmer than others and annual precipitation is greater in some years than in others. These differences are referred to as natural variability in climate or simply climate variability. On the other hand, climate change is a long-term continuous change, an increasing or a decreasing trend. The change is strongly modulated by the natural variability in the climate. For example, this figure shows annual mean temperature data plotted over time. Clearly, the annual temperature is not constant. It varies from year to year. This natural variability will always persist, even if the long-term trend is for annual temperature to increase. What does this mean? This implies that to pick up a clear climate change signal, observed historical climate data must be averaged over a relatively long period of time in order to be used in the climate risk assessment. This is often based on what we call climate normals. For example, a 10-year average could easily be influenced by, by, by a short-term warming or cooling trend, whereas a 30-year average would likely smooth out much of this effect. So for climate risk assessment, we are saying that it is important for us to average data over a long period of time, typically 30 years, instead of just using decadal 
data sets which could be influenced by internal climate variability or natural climate variability. Some of the key types of observational climate data set will now be discussed. Appropriate observed data and information are critical for climate risk assessment. So the key types of data that we are typically require for infrastructure climate risk assessment include station data, grid and meteorological data sets, grid analysis data sets, and remotely sensed quantitative radar data sets. And the key meteorological, the key historical variables that we require can be classified as meteorological, hydrological, and other environmental variables. We'll dive into each of these categories subsequently. Key relevant meteorological variables that we typically use for infrastructure risk assessment are temperature, precipitation, humidity, wind speed, direction, radiation, and other variables which are project specific. In terms of hydrological variables, we typically require runoff volume, discharge depth, and velocity, groundwater storage, soil moisture, water temperature, water quality parameters, and others. And in terms of environmental variables, we typically require sea level rise, amongst others. And these are project specific. So for some projects, we will require most of these variables, most of all of the variables. But in some other projects, we require just a few of the variables, such as precipitation and temperature. So the location of the project matters, and the time scale of the project also matters.